Hello, my name is Wilfried Visser from Delft University. I'm going to give a demonstration of a simulation of a gas turbine using the gas turbine simulation program version 11, or GSP 11. I double click the icon on the desktop and the program starts, showing the main form on the top right corner of the screen. The main form contains various step sheets with component models from which we can build a model. We are going to actually use a pre-configured model so we don't have to build a model in this demonstration. We're going to do a similar task as that is prescribed in the Quick Start Basics section, the Quick Simulation session. So we're going to open a GSP project with a pre-configured model. We click the Open button and we go to the sample projects subfolder in our GSP projects standard folder. These projects are pre-installed with the installation. We open the T-Jet model, which is a simple model of a simple turbojet, actually the J85 turbojet that was designed by GE in the late 50s. So here you see the model panel with all the components configured in a configuration inlet compressor, combustor turbine exhaust, and also a component to control the fuel flow. All these components are pre-configured with general data, data for the design point or the cycle reference point if you will, and also with map data to, allow, to enable the model to simulate off-design performance. To do a simulation we need to define a case. So we click the case button here and we add a case underneath the reference model and in this case we simply select design as a type of run case. If we now click the run button, GSP will do a simple design point calculation or a cycle reference point calculation if you will. And in the table one record is added with data for the parameters that are selected in the output tab sheet uh, checkboxes in every component. So here you can actually define what you want in the output. We can also look at the results in a more convenient way for a single point. If we look at the operating point report here, if we undock the form, then here we can see a text file with the temperatures, pressures, mass flows, etc. at the various stations at which, at which we have demanded output. And also the global system performance, thrust, rotor speeds, and uh, specific fuel consumption. So next we're going to make it a little bit more interesting. The case and configuration management tree on the left enables the user to uh, clearly manage his run cases, different configurations in a, in a project where he has actually different uh, models of the various configurations and options in his uh, analysis. So we're going to add another case and we can add it underneath the case here, like that. And we have give it, for example, OD1 of design 1. We can also add one under the reference model and then call it OD2. And we're going to use this one actually. And this will be a single steady state simulation. But <coughs> of course, if we run the simulation now, we would simply have a design point and we have an off design point which is a third row here and it's exactly the same as the design point. That is because we did not specify any off design, any condition that is different from the design condition. So we want to do something more interesting. We're going to be interested in the off design operating point at a fuel flow of 0.2 kilograms per second. So change it in 0.2 kilograms per second. That's what we just did. We run again. And now you see the simulation produce an X line in the table with different data. Actually, you see a lower mass flow here, you see a lower rotor speed. You can also have a look at the operating point report here, and we see different data. Now, of course, these single points are interesting, but it's much more convenient if we would have a whole range of points with a uh, gradually uh, decreasing fuel flow, for example. So we're going to add another case under the reference model configuration. 
we click the add case button we name the case of the series one and we select case type steady state series we want to empty the table the results table because we're not interested in this case in results from other cases so we click the close button here we don't want to save and the table is now empty again next we need to configure the uh, off design simulation input we go to the manual fuel control and we go to the steady state series tab and we already see at point one the design point value of fuel flow so we add a point two at value 10 and at point at number 10 we want the fuel flow to be 0.1 kilograms per second we also want to activate the uh, steady state series input by checking the active checkbox here because otherwise the simulation will not actually listen to the series input from the manual fuel control next we click the uh, run simulation button to start the simulation then GSP will first do a design point calculation which will be the cycle reference point that is required for the subsequent off design uh, simulation then GSP asked me uh, confirmation to start at uh, point zero in the um, off design simulation input that we just uh, specified so I click OK and then GSP will calculate off design simulation points up to point 10 a convenient way to look at the results from a series simulation is of course to use a graph um, but first we need to prepare the table a little bit that we're going to look at and that is by inserting a break between the design point row and the off design simulation result rows because now the graph knows that these things are belong to separate groups we now look at the uh, the graph and then we first need to specify what we actually want to see we want to see pressure ratio as a function of fuel flow and thrust for example and turbine inlet temperature uh, probably mass flow at the inlet station too like this and now you see a small d at the right which indicates the design point and the line or the curve here is actually all the off design points connected if we would actually delete the first few points you would actually see the like this you would actually see the uh, line become disconnected from the design point so using a break in a table like this and then showing the graph is very convenient there are options to automatically add breaks between series and design points to separate curves in the graph we're going to give an example of this by changing the simulation uh, a little bit um, comparing performance at different operating conditions we're going to click the little ambient and flight conditions icon uh, on the top left of the window and we're going to the off design conditions and we're going to change the uh, conditions to ISA plus and adding 30k degrees to the ambient uh, standard temperature now in general it's a good idea to uh, reset the model back to the cycle reference point to make it easy for uh, GSP to start simulating again at uh, uh, max power and we do that by resetting by clicking this button resetting the design point so now if we start the simulation GSP will do the cycle reference point again which is exactly the same ask me to start at point zero and then it will do the simulation this is avoiding GSP getting in trouble to find the uh, base load point or max uh, takeoff power point from a very low point that is iterating towards takeoff power from a from an operating point far away from the cycle reference point now next before we are going to look at the graph again we want to uh, change a few things in the table so we have properly we properly separate the uh, the different series so we're going to the point where we started the second series and we started with the design point we don't want the design point because it's exactly it's the same as the design point in the beginning of the table so we delete that record 
but we want to have a break between the point zero and the last point 10 there. So we insert a break there, and now we will have a look at the graph, and we'll see two curves. The one, one curve is for the uh, uh, standard conditions uh, uh, performance uh, simulation, and the red one is uh, at plus 30 uh, degrees uh, temperature. And obviously, you see the pressure ratio is a little bit lower. It's starting at the design point almost. Thrust is also lower. Of course, turbine inlet temperature is a lot higher uh, if we have the same uh, fuel flow. And also, um, the mass flow is lower because of the lower density. We can also look at uh, things as a function of other parameters, for example, as a function of turbine inlet temperature, and then we see other things like this, for example. So there's many ways you can look at the data using the XI graph uh, function in GSP. Next, we would also want to look at the uh, operating curves in the compressor map. So we open the compressor uh, data entry window. We go to the map tab sheet, and then if we click the little icon to show, show the map graph, we see the compressor map. Make it a little bit larger. Here we see the design point already. Uh, if we now go to the map menu and we say, draw the steady state points, we see the operating curve in the map. We can zoom in a little bit. And we see that, uh, as expected, the operating line in the map for the different conditions is almost exactly the same as it should be. The blue line is not connected to the design point because we deleted a few points there. You also see that the operating line is uh, crossing the uh, stall margin in this map, and that is because in the model we did not implement the functions that are actually avoiding stall in the actual engine, uh, which are uh, bleed valves, uh, compressor bleed valves. Okay, so this concludes this demonstration of GSP 11 to simulate a turbojet engine. Thank you for your attention.